Hey everyone, today I want to talk about another physics problem. So in this setup, we have a disc that's rolling down a slope with a coefficient of mu. Now this slope is going to be able to provide a certain amount of friction, which is going to uh, torque the disc and allow it to rotate. At low speeds, this frictional force is enough to allow the ball to roll without slipping, aka the condition A, where A is the acceleration of the disc down the slope, equals alpha times R, where R is the radius of our disc, and alpha is its angular acceleration. However, the faster this ball moves, right, at a certain point it's going to be moving so quickly in the linear direction if we make this slope, like, way bigger, right, at a certain point this slope with a coefficient of friction mu isn't going to be able to provide enough frictional force to keep the ball rotating with the speed that it's linearly accelerating. So the goal of the problem is to find the angle where the disc begins to slip if the slope has a coefficient of friction mu. Alright. To tackle this problem, we're going to start by setting up a free diagram on the disc. Okay. Let's go ahead and start by labeling, labeling our forces. We know that we have mg pointing down. We know that we have a normal force that acts perpendicular to the slope. This is fn. Finally, we know that we have a frictional force acting on the base of the disc. We can go ahead and break mg down into two components, one that acts perpendicular to the slope, and one that acts parallel to the slope. This perpendicular component y is going to cancel out with fn, leaving only the parallel component that I'm going to call X. Let's go ahead and figure out what this angle up here is. And that is simply, if we extend this vertical line down, we can see that this is 90 minus theta, meaning that this vertical angle here is also 90 minus theta, meaning that this angle up here is just theta. Okay, so this here is theta. Therefore, sine theta equals x over mg. x equals mg sine theta. And with the same logic, y equals mg cosine theta. Now that we know all of our component forces, we're going to go ahead and use sigma f equals ma in two directions. So sigma f equals ma, and we're going to go two directions. One is going to go in the direction of the slope, so I'm going to call this fs, and the other is going to be parallel to the slope, and I'm, or perpendicular to the slope, and I'm going to call this fp. So, let's go ahead and clarify our directions. This will be our positive direction for down the slope, and this will be our positive direction for perpendicular to the slope. All right. So, for Fs, we have mg sine theta 
minus our frictional force equals m a down the slope. All right, for f p we have f n minus m g cosine theta equals zero. Right, this is simply moving down the slope. It's not like bouncing off of the slope or something like that. We're also going to set up a torque equation. So, we know that sigma t equals I alpha, which equals R cross F, aka RF, uh, when R and F are parallel. Right, and again, the only difference between saying that R cross F and R times F, the only difference between these two, two statements, if R and F are parallel, is that this gives you a vector. This gives you a scalar that represents the magnitude of the torque which for our purposes is effectively the same thing. So, anyways. So our only torque acting on this uh, with respect to this center of mass here is this frictional force. So, torque equals uh, R, since we used a capital R uh, at the top, so R times F, which equals I alpha. And what is I? Let's go ahead and recognize that I here is one half M R squared. This is times alpha. Okay, from here I can clearly see that these R's are meant to cancel. So we have that F equals one half M times R times alpha. All right, I'm going to rewrite all three of these equations out. All right, I wrote out our system of equations. Now I'm just going to write down a couple of notes. The first being that A equals alpha times R and that's just our condition for rolling without a slipping. The next recognition is to realize that F max, right, the maximum amount of friction that this slope can provide is mu times Fn. It cannot physically uh, give more friction to this system. It is limited by this mu. So again, once this condition, acceleration equals alpha r, is met if this slope is giving its maximum friction. If you were to go beyond that, if a, so right, so for instance, if a was greater than alpha times r, this is slipping, right? And what we're saying is that this friction wouldn't be enough to make these terms A equals alpha times R equal to each other. So with all of these conditions in mind, let's solve this system of equations. We'll start by substituting in mu Fn for our frictional forces, right? So we're going to have mg sine theta minus mu fn equals ma mu fn equals one half mr alpha 
we can rewrite fn as mg cosine theta, right? If we were to just move mg cosine theta to the other side of this equation. So I'll make that substitution in these now as well. So we have mg sine theta minus mu times mg cosine theta equals ma. And we have mu times mg cosine theta equals one half times mr times alpha. And so alpha would equal a over r using our little note here. So I'll go ahead and make that substitution right now. Our r's cancel out, leaving us with this statement that mu mg cosine theta equals one half ma. I'm going to isolate a and then we're going to substitute it back into this top equation up here. So we get two mu mg cosine theta equals ma and our m's cancel out. So I'm gonna make that substitution right now into this equation up here. So we have mg sine theta minus mu mg cosine theta equals m times two mu g cosine theta. Let's get rid of all these m's and we can get rid of all the g's. So now we can write this again as sine theta minus mu cosine theta equals two mu cosine theta. Move this to the other side. Sine theta equals three mu cosine theta. I'm going to divide both sides by cosine theta, leaving us with sine theta over cosine theta, which that's just tan theta. And this equals three mu. So therefore, our angle theta equals the inverse tangent of three mu. So right, so if you go beyond this angle, at that point, the disc would begin to slip on the slope. So with that, I hope you enjoyed that little problem and thanks for watching.